Hello, my name is John Rounds. I'm the Senior System Analyst here at Talkaphone. Today we're going to be unboxing a Voight 500 or 600 series emergency phone and talking about the uh, basic of the quick installation uh, and connection of the device. Hello, today we're going to be unboxing a Voight 500E. Uh, this will also be very similar to a Voight 600E. I can explain some differences when we get there. Uh, inside the box, uh, it does open from the front. <clears throat> the first thing that we're gonna find here at the top, we see there's the back of the phone, uh, MAC address, um, but the first thing we have to take out of the box is the ferrite core and the faceplate mounting screws. So these are used to mount the faceplate into the enclosures uh, and the ferrite core goes on the ethernet cable to help eliminate any interference that may be around. As we look at the next flap, We'll be able to lift the box or the call box out of the box. <clears throat> so here we have the Voight uh, 500E. Uh, as you can see, it says emergency red button. Um, the Voight 600E would be slightly different in the fact that the left side of the faceplate here would be black, and the calling and answered um, LEDs would not be visible until they illuminate through the black side of the faceplate. We're going to continue on with the basic connections today. So we have to remove the back box from the phone. There are four nuts at the corners that are 5 16 so I've got all but one of them off here. So we'll take this last one off and then we can lift the back box off and get into the phone. Uh, for the basic connections, you'll see we have two ethernet ports down here along the bottom. The primary connection for the phone is going to be the one on the right hand side. It is labeled P1 WAN, W-A-N. Um, across the bottom then we have most of the rest of the basic connections. The left six terminals, one through six, are going to be the auxiliary outputs. Terminal one and two is output one, three and four is output two, uh, five and six is output three. Uh, then we go over to the next six pin block where we have seven through twelve. Those are the auxiliary inputs, uh, the same kind of order. Uh, seven and eight is output one, nine and ten is output two, and eleven and twelve is output three. Um, over here on the right hand side we have uh, a little two pin block where we have it labeled as A and B. Uh, that's going to be for direct power instead of PoE. Uh, it is labeled with A and B because the polarity reverses depending on whether you were using uh, 12R24 volts. <clears throat> uh, slightly above that we have a pair of uh, jumper caps that also need to move positions depending on 12 or 24 volts. Uh, it is labeled right beside it there. Uh, the inside pair is 24 volts and the top and bottom ends make it 12 volts. Uh, let's see, we also then have the little battery sticker up here to remove. That's going to keep your time and clock for um, logging purposes really. The rest of the little two pin connectors for the most part are for different hardware builds of our phone that would have extra buttons. Um, the serial port up here at the top can be used for a console connection. Uh, the little two pin green one on the right hand side labeled line level is for an audio output. Uh, and then right below that would be a handset if we had a handset model. Greetings everybody. Today we will be programming a VOIP 500 or VOIP 600 series call station via Microsoft Edge. So the first thing we need to do uh, after we've launched Edge to make that compatible, uh, we need to go into the settings menu and then default browser on the left hand side. Make sure we have Internet Explorer compatibility set to allow. And I tend to have better luck if I add the IP address of the device uh, into uh, the approved list. So the default address is 192.168.1.10 with a 255.255.255.0 subnet mask. So I have done that. Uh, now we should hopefully be able to load the page. Login box pops up, username is admin, password is admin, at sign, one, two, three. There we go. So at the top, you can see we're in Internet Explorer mode. I'm going to close that to get it out of the way. Um, so VoIP doesn't tell us 500 or 600. Uh, same circuit board, different visual appearance.
in my case, I don't need to change the IP address to talk to my phone system, but if we did need to change the IP address, uh, that would be under network and IP settings. So we can switch to DHCP or adjust our static address and host name as needed. The primary configuration we need to do is gonna be under network and SIP settings here on the left-hand side. Uh, so for most phone systems, this is gonna hold pretty true and the backend on the phone system might be a little different. Uh, the phone number here tends to be either the phone number or the extension number. Uh, in my case, it's going to be the extension number. Uh, the primary SIP server FQDN slash IP address is indeed going to be, again, typically the IP address for the phone server, but it will take the FQDN um, not to find the server, but as part of the authentication string. So uh, in my case, it's 192.168.1.1. 199 that is. Uh, then we have to mark the little register check mark to enable the rest of the fields. Uh, on my system, the username is the same as the extension. Uh, does not have to be, but that should be provided to you by the administrator of the phone system. Uh, same with the password. Uh, primary SIP server address will again typically be the, or has to be an IP address in this case, uh, usually matching what we filled in up above. Um, under that SIP server slash fqdn ip address section if you only have one server please leave the voip.local placeholders uh, do not remove those unless you have additional servers uh, down below that does not matter uh, we just need to put in the one server we do have um, let's see this phone typically does not assume the outbound calls go through the same server so we need to fill the outbound proxy section in with the same information Okay, then when we hit apply on that page, when the page refreshes, or if we refresh the page, there we go. So we want to see green here and register, our register is active, registered, not registering. If we see registering, we've got something wrong that we need to figure out. So now we're logged in, in as an extension on the phone system. We need to provide a destination number to call, so that is under VOIP, and then number list. Uh, by default, the big red button for emergency button number one points to list number one. So we can put in whatever the number needs to be, a 911 security. Uh, in my case, I'm just gonna put in the extension of my desk phone. Uh, if you have multiple numbers, this is where you can put that list in. Uh, I'll hit apply here to save that. Uh, if you have multiple numbers under call parameters, ringer timer is how many rings it'll take to move over to the next call. Uh, audio settings gives you your volume control. Uh, and then typically with these phones, we usually need to activate one of the output relays to trigger the blue strobe light on top. So that's under devices. And then auxiliary outputs. Uh, we typically tell people output number two because it's consistent with our analog phones. So I selected two here from the drop dropdown. Uh, I like to change the name of this so we know what it is in the future. Uh, and then most commonly, it's this very first button under call related events. This is call with button number one is initiated for entire call. Uh, the duration of 10 seconds is grayed out here unless you're changing this to custom. Uh, then it'll activate that field so you can set a timer. Uh, go ahead and hit apply again to save that. Uh, at that point, that phone is configured and will place a phone call.